Hope this email finds you well. Overworked and Underplayed is a not safe for work Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast about a group of young professionals from the real world who find themselves transported to a strangely familiar place full of fantasy and magic. See attached for episode description and content warnings. Thanks for listening. What does it mean to be real? Philosophers have been arguing with, about this since the beginning of time. In the allegory of the cave, the Greek philosopher Plato describes a group of people who have lived their entire lives chained to a wall of a cave. These people have had their heads and necks held in position thus that the only thing that they can see are shadows being projected onto a wall. After some time, these shadows become their only reality, until one day, one of the prisoners is freed and sent out of the cave, only to have their entire sense of reality shattered. You see, Socrates and Plato and other Greek philosophers understood that the shadows represent the reality that we can perceive, and the goal of any philosopher is to use higher methods to perceive higher levels of reality. But what happens when six relative strangers find their chains broken and ripped from the metaphorical cave? Such is the fate of the subject of today's story, the strange case of the disappearance of the occupants of Conference Room 327, thrust into a new place unlike anything they have ever known. Now in new forms and surrounded by a dark forest, we learn what truly happens when a person's definition of reality is shaken. Will they adapt to this new form of reality, or will they fight tooth and nail to return to the cave? Welcome, my unpaid interns. I am your district manager, or DM, Alex Caps, and welcome to our podcast, which probably could have been an email. Joining me today, I have... Hi, my name is Annalyn Hardy, and I play Taylor Jacobs, a centaur barbarian and ambitious marketing coordinator for Marketing Solutions Plus. Hey, my name's Kyle. I play Jimothy Sticks. He is a gnome artificer, but in this world, he plays the role of a technician. So just plugging and chugging. Hi, my name is Marjorie. I play Amy Ann, a basic B, rough and tumble human fighter with a freshly minted dentistry degree. Her happy place is exploring the cavities of strangers. What up? It's your boy Marcel Hardy playing Richard Cox, a human consultant turned halfling bard who wholly believes it's better to be lucky than to be good, but it's best to be both. Hi, my name is Katie, and I play Crystal. She is the owner of and creator of her very own MLM. She is a drow druid. Hi, I'm Tyler. I play the character known as Bentley. He is your average IT guy turned now human paladin. He lives his life dreaming of the day when someone actually turns it off and turns it back on again. (laughs) All right. And today's discussion starter is what is your go-to coffee order? Taylor's just drinking black coffee. That's it. I mean, no frills, just pure efficiency. Just the most amount of energy she possibly gets. I mean, if you're not suffering, you really know you're alive. What did you say? God. <laughs> I said if you're not suffering, do you really know you're alive? Oh, uh, yes. God. That's pretty the, much that's very on brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the more you like this without darkness. <laughs> exactly. All right. Okay, so Crystal's um, Starbucks order, she rarely goes to Starbucks because she doesn't really drink coffee, but she does like their marketing, so she likes all the branding and packaging. So when she goes, she gets what's called a sick tea. Um, and I'm sure you guys are dying to know what that is. Um, it is though. one bag of mint majesty, one bag of jade citrus mint, five honeys, five pumps of peppermint, and then half a cup of, has to be steamed lemonade, like specifically steamed. <laughs> um, no shaking. They don't stir it. You just want all of them in there at the same time. She wants to stir it because she wants to feel like she's making something. Um, and then she also <laughs> adds crystal clarity essential oils to them. But just the ones that are safe to ingest, not the ones she handed to Taylor last time. (laughs) (laughs) Amy Ann's go-to order is pretty basic, just like like herself. She likes uh, regular coffee with some cream, um, but she does drink it out of a straw. She's very cognizant of teeth staining properties. Got to protect those pearly whites. Exactly. That's right. So Richard likes his coffee on the sweet side, so he typically orders some sort of frappe, frappuccino, depending on where he's going, with a caramel sauce and a shot of espresso. Nice. So Bentley's coffee, it depends on the time of day. 
in the morning. He's not a morning person. He just drinks black coffee because he believes that you should suffer through the bitterness so you know when the good times are. Uh, but if it's like an end of the day slash wanting like a dessert type drink, he'll 100% get anything with caramel in it because he's basic like that. <laughs> Jim's coffee order, he likes to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a Dunkachino, which is half coffee, half hot chocolate, and an extra turbo shot. It's for that extra caffeine in the morning. Nice. I kind of want to try that now. It's really good. So when we last left off, the party had managed to uh, make it to the conference room, which then sent them somewhere else. They are lost in a dark forest and came upon a person sitting around a fire. As you guys come upon the camp, you see a couple of lean-tos, like just some, looks like almost like some canvas tarp stretched out over some wooden frames and, you know, some dry places to get in case it rains. It looks pretty hastily put together, and there's just the one guy sitting behind the fire who, who has invited you. Once he saw that you, you guys didn't look like you appeared to be a threat, he invited you to gather around the fire and take a load off. Well, hey there. Oh, uh... Crystal, I can really see you in this uh, oh, firelight. You look a little, you look a little different. What? No, Ooh. I don't uh, feel different. I'm the only one here that stayed normal. The the man's looking. He goes, "What do you mean? That's how all drow look." Um, like they've been surrounded by Oompa Loompas. No, I'm a I'm a person. <laughs> not a dr- not a dr- what? A drow. She doesn't identify as a drow. I do not identify as that. I appreciate that you um are trying to put that identity on me, but I'm gonna need you to take a few steps back. Hey, you, I, you're, you're purple. No, I'm not. You, you have purple these, skin you, now. You are most drow or purple, okay. and they have pointy ears like you have. And she like reaches up and like touches her ears. So She's you feel, like, as, as your ears feel normal, but the further up you go, the longer and skinnier they get. So her face, as she's taking her fingers up her ears, her face just starts to like, panic like she's like this is not a part of her reality that she can accept so she's like oh my god so um before crystal was very like blonde and she dressed in linen clothing and she was about five foot nine very skinny always wore sunglasses and now she is a little bit taller five foot ten and she is now purple and she has white hair and um and she takes her hair like she's she's like the next thing she does is when she takes her ear like feeling her ears and then she like is grabbing her hair because she had really expensive extensions in and she's starting to worry about those oh yeah those are gone um and so she's like pulling her hair around the sides of her shoulders to take a look at it and she realizes her hair is white and she is about to start having a panic attack and so she takes one of her essential oils out of her yeah thing and so, pops the top and like goes to sniff it so as you're doing this you also notice that your hands are purple she starts shaking <laughs> she's shaking and she's like this is not my reality i do not accept this um, um uh is your you uh miss hi i'm uh, taylor my name is eric hi eric uh is your is your friend under the influence of something? We're actually su- not super sure what all happened to us, but just real quick, let me take care of Crystal. She's my most important. Um, <laughs> Amy Ann, I don't condone the use of prescription drugs for not the people they've been prescribed to, but do you have anything? <laughs> 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 she, okay. she pulls out one of her essential oils, and she is, like she the label is like reading calm, and she's like she pops that lid and she's okay. like sniffing. I need you to roll me a D eight. Okay. Do you have anything coping she can mechanism? Take? So. So, so uh, as uh, as Crystal's kind of shaking like Five. that, Amy Ann's kind of digging in her bag. She knows she has, like, some Advils and things, like, in a bottle without a label. So she's hoping some kind of placebo effect might occur. Um, so she takes it out. Here you go. Here, here you go, Crystal. Try, take one of these. Okay. It's just a white It's she just a white nicely pill. nicely and kindly, she's like, I'm sorry, Dr. Amanda, but I, I do not take any unnatural supplements. It's vegan. It's But it's also a pharmaceutical, and um, I don't trust any of those things so i'm going to stick with my oils because okay. that is my if i mixed it with some oils <laughs> would that help <laughs> I, I appreciate your um your enthusiasm but um politely i decline okay so, okay. so eric's just sitting here poking the fire and he looks <laughs> at the rest of you like i imagine at this point jimmy and bentley would have caught up yeah and you guys are all kind of taking a seat around the fire and real quick crystal as you were inhaling that one Mm-hmm. You felt almost like your face was beginning to shrink. 
That's just I her face. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> like, um, like well, yeah, my, well, like exactly. Yeah, my <laughs> actual face or my head? Like, like, like your whole head. Isn't weed. Oh, my I whole like head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The face better. <laughs> the face better. It's <laughs> <laughs> her head. The same size as <laughs> <in> her face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you feel like your that. whole head is is like kind of shrinks a little bit, and as you exhale, it goes back to the normal size. She chooses to ignore that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and she just just pops that lid back on, and she just puts it back in her bag because clearly that's not working. So she's just gonna start like meditating right in front of everybody. Okay. <laughs> what about the lot of you? You guys look a bit. You, your clothes look a bit strange to me. Where are you from? Richard is now that he, they're finally like kind of resting. Whatever's like rolling his sleeves back up, so he's not just dangling things. And like rolling his pants up first at the waist, so that the inseam is where it needs to be. Then down at the cuffs and everything. <laughs> And he's just like, I used to be tall. He's just like in shell shock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Were you, were you shrunken by a wizard? Maybe, I don't know. There's, there was an earthquake and then there was some like essential oils. I guess something broke and we inhaled some vapors. You said an earthquake, where? Uh, in, in our office building, we, like the ground was shaking. So we all went out of the desk. I haven't felt an earthquake anytime soon. Like, it's feeling we're not in Atlanta anymore, though. When was the last time there was an earthquake? He's sitting here counting, like, on his hands, and then he, like, takes off a shoe, <laughs> and he's, like, trying to do math. He goes, it's been many moons. That's how long ago. That's an accurate count. Yeah. He says, I don't know, uh, uh, six months? Oh, man. Mm. That's not good. Okay. Oh, your, your friend, uh, you, sir. M me? Yes. Yes. What is your name? I'm Bentley. Uh, uh, nice to meet you, Bentley. Uh, Hi. What, what was your name again? Eric. My name is Eric. Eric. Are you the security for this group? No, I, I work IT. Yeah, he does information security. I mean, I guess, yeah. Oh, you're a courier. Uh, you no. carry messages from people to people. They normally don't use a knight for something like that. No, that's not what I do. I knight. What do you mean? Well, you wearing armor? Yeah, I don't really know where this came you're, from. I just kind of woke up wearing it. Interesting. Where where did you say you were from? Some people uh, not call not it from there, Atlanta. but we're <laughs> original we were all originally in Atlanta last time we were aware. Atlanta. I haven't heard of this city or province or wherever. Is it far from here? Uh, where is here? Trevaria. Where? Trevaria. It's one of the imperial provinces. Transylvania? No, Trevaria. Trevago? That's what it is, Trevago. <laughs> yeah. Trevago. No, Trevaria. It's one of the far-flung imperial provinces. What year is it? Uh, the year 871 of the great emperor Skog. Crystal leans over to Amy Ann and she's like whispering, but not very discreetly. She's not great at that. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I think we need to find somewhere else to rest. <laughs> this person doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> well, neither do we though. So, no. and so Amy Ann tries to respond, you know, also also quietly and tactfully. Well, I don't know where else we would go. I, I, do you know how to make a fire? It, it seems like this is a pretty safe place from wolves. Do you think he's like dangerous or She had forgotten about the wolves to be honest. Um, and now that you've reminded her, she's completely content to stay right <laughs> <in front of laughs> the fire. Do you think he yeah, has remind. anything for what happened to my body? We could certainly ask him. Don't know why hey, not. Hey, uh, hey yes. Eric. Uh hey, so I I have different legs and I can't cover all of me anymore. Yes, you're a centaur. Oh, no. What do you mean by you have different legs? Like, I used to be a full person. You used to be a foal. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's going to have to think really hard about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a, like a, like a, I was a, a human. Yes, the upper half of you is, is human-ish, is humanoid. Taylor's going to have to take a big, deep breath for that one. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I was an, uh, I had human legs. A human body. I was completely human 20 oh, minutes ago. Oh, you were polymorphed. You must have pissed off Animals? a rather a rather strong wizard. Like a polymorphing Power Ranger? Yeah. <laughs> That's mighty That's morphing really Power Ranger. Thank you. <laughs> or Animorphs? That's all the morphing I have. I... <laughs> 
Morphine? It's more this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, Polymorphine. Time. You guys, <laughs> turns into a shit. You are the strangest group of travelers <laughs> I've come across in some time. Your words are so invigorating and exciting. I don't know what any of this means. Really? Any it, of it? What is what is this what is this polymorphing power ranger? <laughs> How it's it take I feel like it'd be really hard to explain. Basically they hop into this giant Zord. What's a Zord? Yep. It's super big. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant machine. So it's like a and building. Yeah. So anyway, my ass used to be a human ass. <laughs> Wait. So so hold on. I don't know that much about centaurs, but are you saying you had, you you, you had a friend who was half human, half donkey? Like half assing it? No, I never do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only full assing. Yeah. Um. All right. And someone else want to talk to Eric? <laughs> Taylor's fully given up. <laughs> yeah, quick bit of a quick question here. Uh, so we heard wolves. Is that something we should be concerned about? Uh, the the howlers tend not to come near the fire. They know that anyone with the means to set up a fire probably also has weapons and a means to defend themselves. They're not completely unintelligible beasts. Okay, so is it okay if we stay here with you by this fire tonight while the wolves are Oh, out? certainly. The way all of our huntsmen operate is... Anyone who is who peacefully in, uh, approaches us in the forest is welcome to stay with us. But I mean, if you try to cross me, I will cut you. That's fair. Uh, okay, safety in numbers. He says we have an old proverb: "Is don't start any, and there won't be any." <laughs> I think I'm familiar with that one. <laughs> After tonight, we're going to try to travel in the morning. I assume. Where is the nearest major city? Well, you're in Trevaria. The crown jewel of, of the region is the city of Lavron. How far away is that? Uh, perhaps. I'm sorry, did you just say Lavron? Lavron. Like the basketball player? What is, what is basketball? She okay. just blinks at him. You're gonna like she doesn't even. <laughs> Somebody she's like recognizing oil. the fact uh-huh. that uh, <laughs> he's not going to catch on to stuff. And she's just like, all right, I give up. And she just doesn't respond. She's just like. Okay. Uh, he tells you, it, it probably from here, uh, if you follow the main road, and he points at a, at a trail that cuts through the woods that you see just on the edge of camp, uh, probably a couple of hours to the main highway, and from there, maybe a day's walk, unless you can convince a trade caravan to let you ride their, their cart into town. Wait, but you mean we have to walk for a day? Well, you're not just going to, like, fly there, are you? We already tried flying. Does not work. <laughs> Does not work. <laughs> well, not okay. all of us tried flying. <laughs> That's true. Okay, perfect. So, you know, we'll stay the night here, and uh, in the morning we'll we'll go to try to find the nearest main town. Maybe we can talk to someone there who has a little more knowledge of why we're here, what we're doing. Preferably somewhere with an internet connection. My followers are going to be wondering I, where the heck I, I am. I don't know how to tell you this, but you, I don't think we have internet here. What What? What do you mean? What is What is this internet? The, the internet, from where we're from, um, you don't have Starlink here, do you? Okay. We, uh, <laughs> he, like, looks up. <coughs> it's how we exchange information. It's, it's, um... Oh, oh, you mean like the World Wide Web? Exactly, exactly like that. Exactly yes, that. So yes. have Somewhere with wide. that. Yeah, where well, is that? Trevaria is the home of the World Wide Web, and Lavron is just the place you need to go if that's what you're seeking. Yes. You the, guys, this sounds the good. The techno spiders it manage it from there. Perfect. The, the, I mean, oh, <laughs> no. Um, Hang on, wait, you said spiders. <laughs> yes, the, the drow and the techno spiders. Uh, how that's how does that work? That's what he said you were. But, like... A drow. No, but I'm not that, so like I don't know. No, huh? you're, you're you're. I'm pretty sure you're a drow. Human. I'm he a uh, human. He like he takes a lantern yeah, and just like kind of shines it in your eyes, and you like kind of. Oh recall. my god, that yeah. hurts. Yep. Oh. Yep. She's a drow. <laughs> Freaking what is with the people don't put and that in light her face. Bulbs. All right. Okay, uh. so so hang on. Back to the back to the spiders thing. When we, you describe the web, what? How does that operate? Well, to you? no one really knows how it works. It's, but it's like a series of tubes, 
and information travels along them. That approximates to Crystal's knowledge of how the internet works. Okay. Okay. Hey, you yeah. guys, uh, how do you feel about staying here tonight? We avoid the wolves by using the fire. Um, and yeah. in the morning, we'll go to town. Maybe I can buy some pants. Yeah, yeah Jimmy. I, I like it. I love it. Thank you for taking charge. And please, I, I, part of me cannot take you seriously without pants on. But what you're saying makes total sense. Um, if you want to, I can give you some, some gym, pa- you know, uh, shorts for my bag. Would that per- would that help you? Perfect. Pants problem solved. Okay. I can put my pants on. Okay. So Amy Ann pulls out her they're very n- gross uh, gym bag shorts. 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 Yes. On me, they're probably like long pants. I was going to say, yeah. 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 <laughs> her gym shorts turned into his gym pants. Yeah, yes. I'm going to need to know how you're going to, how, how exactly you're going to cinch them bad yeah. boys down enough. They're like WNBA like gym shape. shorts. Like they're really long uh, okay. uh, gym so shorts. Okay, so I'm going to dig through my bag and try to find a zip tie and well um, you have 25 of those <laughs> so i'm gonna zip tie my pants on how many are you gonna <laughs> use to attempt to zip tie your pants i'm gonna use one as a belt and one on each ankle so, yeah, okay. so to do a belt tie. you would need three wait do the basketball shorts not have like a little do they not have a drawstring yeah they have a drawstring i just said how are you gonna how are you gonna suck <laughs> okay. those bad I'm, boys down you're the one who jumped to zip tie you know, okay <laughs> i'm still gonna zip tie the ankles up because i don't you, want spiders in my pants okay <laughs> so <laughs> you... genius actually I'm yeah imagining he's gonna end up with like <laughs> like joggers the, the, he's gonna yeah. the shorts and the joggers yeah. and chinos yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. he's got so parachute pants i use the drawstring crank down on that bad boy and then I zip tie my ankles up so that I don't get spiders in my okay, pants. Okay, so you now have 23 zip ties. I'm going to need you to keep track of that. Eric is just kind of looking around, and he says, uh, are any of you hungry? I am. I could eat. And he, he leans over, and you I'm see, like, next horse. to the fire, which you didn't really <laughs> notice, were uh, looked like seven or eight squirrels that he had caught earlier and were kind of on a spit, and he lifts them up, and he goes... Squirrel kebab? You know what? Yeah, I'm in. Give me the squirrel kebab. Hands you one. Anyone else? Yeah, Billy's. Yeah, like, yeah I'll take one. Which is like, you got any condiments with that as he grabs one? He just kind of looks at you weird. You don't got no sauce? I'm going to have to eat this dry ass. Sauce. <laughs> 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 this is like a barbecue. You're complaining about like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He looks at you he says, what is this sauce? You a know? man without sauce is lost. Exactly. But for a man can have too much sauce. I, I'm really starting to believe we are in a weird place if sauce doesn't exist in this universe. <laughs> they have the World Wide Web and no sauce. No sauce. We're clearly still on Earth. Like, we're clearly still here. I have a theory uh, about that. Yeah. Have I think it's going to be like, there's two moons, so I don't know if we're on Earth. That's oh just because it's reflecting <laughs> off of another star. That, that. <laughs> 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 ben, Bentley's just gonna like nod or move himself for the conversation because he feels like he'll have aneurysm from sheer stupidity if he continues it. No, <laughs> Richard, but upon hearing thing, Pat just bite Crystal he's, is he's not stupid. Sauce anymore. She's just firmly in denial. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, for yeah, sure. that makes fully, sense. Fully, this is she not real. Her own damn he, turns, he turns to the rest of you. Uh, squirrel? Squirrel? Please. Um, is it organic? Uh, uh, th- no, I removed the organs. Ethically sourced? Uh, is a bow ethical? Chris, I don't know how to tell you this, but this is the most organic food you're ever <laughs> going to eat. Yeah, she'll take it. No right, hormones, no nothing. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, does Amy Ann, uh, so she had looked in her bag. Does she have her uh, okay. uh, protein shake and stuff? Like you search through your bag, and you find a water skin with about a half gallon of water in it, uh, about seven days' worth of what's called hardtack. It's a really shitty cracker. Some black robes and a beaked mask. A kit of tools that looks like medieval torture devices, but they look vaguely like your dental tools. She can't tell if there's a difference. Yeah. I mean, that's just... You find a hammer... It's all barbarism at this <laughs> point. ...and a notebook... <laughs> And then you find three energy bars. Hey, thanks, Eric. I I've got some I've got some stuff here. I appreciate it oh, though, man. Suit yourself. And he just like bites the head right off of one of the squirrels on the skewer. Wait, is he like <laughs> chewing the bones? No, he spits those out. But yeah. So I he sucks like... to get the meat off the head. 
Well, there is well, a brain in there. I mean, yeah, that's, that's how that works. So Richard stops eating the squirrel. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, Bailey's like two bites out of it. I just puts it down. I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he said he did remove the organs, so. No, well, most of them. Obviously, oh. you leave the brain in. That's the most delicious part. Ah, the eyes. okay. No, the eyes. I'm not a savage. Oh, okay. <laughs> so no eyes, but a brain? <laughs> If only at a brain. I need you to nail this down. <laughs> right. Um, Taylor's going to try it. Can she reach her saddlebags? Yeah. From yeah, her? easily. We've decided. We've decided. Yeah. So she's going to reach around for her lunch that she packed. In your saddlebags, you find three water skins, each holding a gallon of water. Three days uh, rations. In fact, you see that like on one of the packages it says Mary Colander's Instant Adventure Rations. <laughs> uh, you find good. two bottles of Crystal Clarity Essential Oils, one pink with green glittery flakes, and one orange. All right. So she's going to take some, a little bit of the rations and eat that instead and just look on in horror at everyone eating squirrel heads. I'm just kidding. It's just Eric. So, so <laughs> as you open up the, you, you notice the ration is in like a, a, not quite burlap, but it's in like a weird kind of bag. And as you open it, this like, like slight puff of like green smoke kind of comes out. And you pull it out, and it's like it's like a little tiny meal all steaming. That's cool. Did anyone? Did you see that? You saw it. Everyone yeah. saw it? Yeah, I'd yeah. say pretty much everyone saw it. And yeah. Even Eric looks and he goes, oh, oh, those are delicious. I'm sorry, wh- how did it do that? It's, it, it's, it's enchanted. It's magic. Is it safe to eat? Yes, it's probably the safest thing to eat at this, at this camp. Well, Taylor's first thought is going to be like, does anyone else need some? But also she's going to be like, but it's enchanted, so maybe not. <laughs> um... Could you tell me a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, the 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 wizards at Mary Colander use they use their enchantment magic, and they enchant this tiny little medallion inside. And he points at the bottom of like the little the little bowl it's in. And he says it's a, it's a similar to the kind of uh, magic that comes out of a fireball, and it instantly heats your rations. It's wonderful. They're quite expensive compared to normal rations. You must be some sort of traveler you, to have such. You created magic MREs. <laughs> <laughs> From the house of Marie Colander. <laughs> so I'm assuming there's like a ton of preservatives in that. What, what's a preservative? Like salt? Mm-hmm. You talking about like salted meat? No. Chemicals. Oh, I don't. I don't. How do you think your essential oils work? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think essential oils work? They're chemicals. All okay. right, over there, Jimothy. Um, please respect the client. Uh, I know we don't all agree potentially about what the oils can and cannot do, but for now oh, we have I to... I know p- exactly what they can and cannot <laughs> do. All right, Good Jim- Sir Jimothy, I must insist at my camp that we remain peaceful and calm. For we do not want to attract bears. Oh, the fire doesn't stop bears. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you know anything about bears? No, I do not. <laughs> we, I'm three feet tall and wearing pants designed f- for a human. Well, if you continue to attract bears, you might as well write snack across your back. <laughs> oh, that's already written on the boat of those gym shorts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's canon. It says snack. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's oh, it'd be even funnier say, because Amy, Amy. Like, yeah. oh, I like snacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly why she bought them. Yes. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> now, the uh, is, is you people all seem very confused. Where where did you you said Atlanta? Yes. What what province is that? Is that a city? Uh, Peach Georgia. Tree? Street? Georgia. G- Georgia. <laughs> what is this Georgia? It's in America. <laughs> it's named after King George the Third. Is it really? I've never heard it of a King oh, okay. George. <laughs> oh. Well, it was a long time ago. 
<laughs> hey, hey, Eric. So, have you run across any other people like us? You know, just a bunch Oops. of confused, <laughs> strange-looking people. I've run across many people in my days, none quite like you. Okay, lot. so we've definitely something has happened to us. I think somebody mentioned, you know, pissing off a wizard. Maybe that happened. I don't know if it's like a wizard-type deal, like somebody was saying. But we need to maybe find somebody who's a subject matter expert in this type of well, weird yeah. stuff. If you're if you're looking for a subject matter expert in things related to the arcane, you can do no better than to travel to Lavron. Okay, so that's and to the visit plan. the Athenium. Athenium. That is where the some of the most powerful wizards, sorcerers, warlocks, druids and artificers have trained for generations all across Osea. Huh. Awesome. I don't believe anything what you said, but I believe that you believe that, and that's okay. Eric, thanks, man. You're you're really doing us a solid. Yeah, yeah oh, by, It by is my pleasure. It is, is the oath that the huntsmen's take huntsman. is mm-hmm. to help protect those who find themselves lost, especially in such dangerous places. Well, thanks. We appreciate you. Dan- dangerous places? Yes, the... The wolves. The wildlands... <laughs> Of the Trevaria bears. are quite dangerous at night. Oh yeah, but like I was thinking, like not that dangerous. Like you're saying danger. Like you're acting like it's actually dangerous. I was just like maybe we should avoid the noise. Hundreds of people are found dead here every year. All right, oh. I'm gonna go sleep. <laughs> 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 Good night, everyone. And Taylor's gonna go like, like try and her best to lay down. Horses sleep standing up. <laughs> She's, she doesn't know that. <laughs> Fun fact, that's not true. All right, I stand yeah. corrected. Yeah, I'm not going to correct Katie on, on horse facts. <laughs> they need two hours of sleeping laying down in order to get REM sleep. This well, is the D&D world. In, yeah, in D&D, <laughs> they, need, they need eight hours um, actually. Well, I, well, she's not full horse, so she's pretty okay, early. It's four hours. Mm. Yeah. It's four hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me in the middle. doubled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so she's going to s- try and lay down. Okay. Just call it a night. What are the rest of you doing? Do the same. Same. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to get, like, a little bit of sleep, but it's okay. probably not going to be very fulfilling. That's fine. Uh, what about you, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm just going to hang out and see what's going on. All I'm right. not going to go to sleep. All right, so about an hour passes. Uh, everyone else is kind of dozed off. I need both of y'all to make a constitution saving throw. So... You, Jimmy, you, uh, with a seven, you just slowly start to doze off. Fair enough. All right. And then what did you get, Bentley? Sixteen. A sixteen? Okay. So you continue on, and every now and then Eric says something to you. You say something back. Uh, I mean, do you have anything you want to ask him since it's just the two of you? Not that I can think of. You slowly begin to doze off. All right. So it's been two hours now. So about two more pass, and it's about this time, uh, Crystal, you find yourself kind of waking up. Like, you just kind of meditated the whole time, and you feel completely rested. That's pretty on point. She has got a great hustle, and she only gets like four to five hours of sleep every (laughs) night. Outside of that, she's uh, working on her projects. So, Uh, yeah, she's not freaked out by that at all. And as you open your eyes, you notice that, that Eric is not sitting around the fire. And you see, you see everybody else, but you do not see Eric. Hmm. And make me a perception check. 18 plus 4. Okay. You hear something that sounds like rustling around in the bushes behind the camp. Do I kind of have a guess as to how far away it is? Probably about like 10, 15 feet behind the tents. Oh, okay. So sh- that's alarming. She's alarmed. Um, and she goes about trying to wake up the closest person to her. I'm going to say you have your pick of who to wake up. I'm going to pick Amy. Okay. okay. So she shakes you awake. Uh, uh, oh, Crystal, what what happened? Are you okay? Shh, shh, shh. And, and as you talk, like you say that and you go, shh, you hear, Ooh. shh. She's like, she like <laughs> leans over and she's like, there is something. In the woods. I don't know what it is, but after Eric's not here anymore, and he was the one that was telling us about bears, and I feel like maybe he skedaddled because there's no bears. Or there is a bear. I don't know. Okay. She's fully panicking. All right, like, make me a well stealth check with disadvantage because oh. you are panicking. It's going to be a seven. 
So you're <laughs> like, like as you're trying to talk quietly, your voice gets louder and louder. It's like pitching. Yeah, and it's about that time you hear the noise kind of stop, and you look like. And you see through, like, kind of the shadow from the from the, the fire in the tent canvas, or, like, the lean-to canvas, you see a large shadow on the other side of your the canvas of your lean-to. Okay, so she's going to, like, like, direct Amy Ann to, like, wake up the next person next to her, and she's going to try and wake up and, Taylor. And it appears, like, it looks like, you see, like, almost like a head bobbing around looking for something. So she tries to wake up Taylor. Okay, so Taylor would probably be in another lean-to. So you're going to try to crawl over Crap. out of this one over to another one? Is there one? anybody else in my lean-to? No, it was really only enough space for, like, two people. Is she in the next closest lean-to? Or yeah, is she in yeah I'd say they're all pretty close to each other because it's, like, one big circle. Crap. We need, um, we need to be quiet, Crystal. Yeah, so, um, so she whisper. she's going to take quiet. some, like, meditating breaths, mm-hmm. and she's going to calm herself back down, and then she's going to... Okay. Crawl as quietly as she can over to um, Taylor's spot. All right. So hold that thought. Uh, Bentley and Jimmy, give me a perception check with disadvantage, since with you're kind of you're you're like ha- uh, a little past half asleep. Sixteen. Okay. At one. All right. So we'll get to that in a second. So make me a stealth check, Crystal. Three. Okay, so this is going to happen at the same time. So uh, it actually works out because you just barely hit the right number you needed to, Bentley. Nice. So Bentley, you kind of wake up. That proficiency and perception. You you, you 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 stir <laughs> awake like you heard something, and you see the like you're kind of groggy and looking around, and then you see Crystal trying to low crawl. And she steps, like, she puts a hand right on, uh, like, a plate of utensils and sends them flying across the camp, making all kinds of noise. All right. And as you fix your eyes on that location, you see the silhouette of a bear as it roars. Okay, yeah, so she sees her crawling, and Ben is like, what's going on? And then, like, hey, and the loud go, noise Whoa. happens. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, holy shit. Uh Who's, I'm assuming, Jimmy would probably Jimmy's be Jimmy's the closest to you. Jimmy, Jimmy, wake up. There's a bear. Jimmy. Ah, oh, shit. What? All right, and I need everyone to roll initiative. All right. So Taylor got an 18. Amy Ann got 19. All right. Crystal, what did you get? I got a 13. I got a 15. Okay. Richard got a 9. Bentley got a 0. I'm going to need Richard and uh, Taylor to make a perception check with disadvantage since both of you are still asleep. It's an 8. Okay, what'd you get? Uh, let's see, perception. Taylor? She got a two. Okay, so you are still asleep. Uh, you, Richard, you just are awake, and you hear the word bear, and you, like, pop awake. You're like, oh, no. That is correct. All right, so at the top of the order is Amy Ann Amanda. So what uh, So what do I see? Do, do I see anybody? I see, obviously, Crystal woke me up. Do I see anybody else waking, or do I only have eyes so, on the bear? So you probably would only have eyes on the bear right okay. this second, because she woke you up and pointed at the silhouette behind your tent. Okay. Can I see anything specific about the bear? Does it look like a regular bear? Does it look like rabbit, anything? Uh, you can't really, I mean, you just see the silhouette of it right this second. Okay, okay. Uh, and it's roaring, you said? Yeah, it just roars. Okay, um, so Amy Ann is going to, if there are any um, squirrels left okay. on the spit, are there any? I'd say there were probably two or three left. Okay, because we didn't pick some. Yeah. So she's going to take the ones that are left, and she's going to run, to, or try to make her way away from everybody else. Okay. Trying to get the attention of the bear. Okay. Ho, oh, hey, ho, oh, oh, ho, right, look over make here. Make me a performance check. Okay. Natural <laughs> Nice. Hell yes. A performance of zero, so 20. <laughs> nice. All right. We'll see what happens. All right. So, Taylor Jacobs, mm-hmm. uh, make me another perception check with disadvantage since Amy Ann's making a bunch of noise. 11. All right. With an 11, uh, you stir awake and you see Amy Ann standing like 20 feet away from camp, waving squirrels on a, on a stick around her head. Oh. Hey, uh, what are you doing over bear, there? Bear, bear. 
Can I conversate with her? I, I'm, since that's it's... fair, because you're just jumping <laughs> okay. around going okay. bear. <laughs> you are trying to get attention. Yeah. So. Yeah, bear. It's just a bear. I'm trying to lead it away. It's just a bear. Just a bear? There's a bear It's a bear. Here? Stay calm. Stay calm and quiet. All right, that's enough. Uh, Taylor, what are you doing? T- well, Taylor's going to like rub her eyes and like start to exit the tent to try and have a better understanding of what's happening. Okay, so what direction are you going? Toward um, Amy Ann. Okay. So I'm going to say because of your speed, you're able to make it to Amy Ann. And then uh, we get to the bear. Y- you can see the silhouette of the bear's head moving around. And you, you hear it stop roaring. goes... <laughs> and it looks like it turns right towards you, Amy Ann. And he takes one swipe and goes right through the tent. And begins crawling his way through the canvas, sniffing the air. I thought and we were in, like, an open place. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought as well. I, I, yeah, she's, like, standing up, trying to walk away from No, no, no I know, I know. Oh, oh He okay. was on the other side of the canvas. So he's coming, trying yeah, to he's, go through. He, okay. he, he, he's, it's a bear. His intelligence is negative four. Okay, Oof. okay. <laughs> he just smells food and uh-huh. hears noises, and he sees... So you see his silhouette, right? He sees you doing this mm-hmm. through the canvas, so he's like, mmm, food that way. Okay, okay. So he's going to swipe through there, and he's going to get about halfway between you and the canvas so he's about 10 feet away from you while you're waving this around and that's going to be his turn uh it is now jimmy okay i'm trying to think how i'm going to play this yeah so picture the camp is like one big circle and you're at like the six o'clock and they're at like the three o'clock can i hop on the bear (laughs) you you can try (laughs) <laughs> that is a bold decision, my friend. You can certainly do try. it. <laughs> it's a bold decision for a man with no pants. <laughs> oh, I had pants. <laughs> he does it for I had pants. pants. I put on pants. Right. And zip Explain tied. to me your plan. What are, what are you going to try to do? How are you going to accomplish this? I'm going to try to, you know, if the bear's away from me, being distracted by the food, I'm going to try to run and hop up on it so I can grab its ears and steer it away. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need you. All right, so you're going to try to sneak up on the bear? Oh, yeah. Okay, I need you to make me a stealth check. And you'll you'll if you're successful with this, you will get close enough to attempt to do that next turn. Uh that's gonna be a sixteen. Okay, let's see how distracted he is. That is enough. You are uh you you so you guys all see is Jimmy gets this wild look in his eyes and begins sneaking up on the bear. Uh all right, so that will be your turn. Uh, Crystal, it is now your turn. Am I still on... I guess I'm still on my hands and knees. Yeah, so the bear just kind of walked... Like, you were on your hands and knees, and the bear just kind of walked, like, three feet away from you, just right past you. Okay, good. Um, cool. So, I am gonna stand up, because I feel like that's a better place to be than on my hands and knees when faced with a bear. And I am going to... Is there anything around me that I can grab to use to defend myself. I mean, there's a club. Okay, cool. I picked that up, and um, I guess, like, that's probably movement speed right there. Yeah, so you're just going to, like, dodge, like, assume a, assume a defensive posture? 100%. Okay. Yeah, I have no, I do not believe that I can take on a bear. I'm going right. to tell you that right Richard, now. Richard, it is now your turn. You are laying on the ground. Yes. You're at, like, the 5 o'clock position. I'm at 5 o'clock. Where's the bear? And where the bear is, is about the 3 o'clock position. Bear is at 3, and is how close is that to Amy Ann? Uh, she the, so the bear is about fifteen or ten feet away from Amy Ann and mm-hmm. is about fifteen feet away from you. Okay, so I hear the bear and I can see all this happening, right? Yeah. Like just my thing. And you also see Jimmy like sneaking past you, like tr- looking like he's trying to sneak up on this bear. Right. So first gut reaction: I just woke up. I hear a bear. I see this. I forget that I am no longer six four. So I'm going to go and try to run to the aid of Amy Ann. So if I can reach the, the, the campfire, I'm going to try to grab one of the, the logs that has like still fire on it. To okay. To All right, so scare the, the bear away. The first thing I need you to do is I need you to make me a sleight of hand check. Okay. What am I doing with the sleight of hand? I will tell you in a second. That's a 12. Okay. So that determined how well you rolled up your pants. Fair enough. That passed. <laughs> uh, but as you get up and you take off running, you don't go nearly as far as you think you would. And that you make sense. it almost to the fire. Okay. 
Uh, but it, it's it's things are a lot farther away from you than you remember them being like just a few hours ago. All right, so that's your turn. Uh, so now Bentley, you've just kind of you're just kind of sitting on a log, and you've just witnessed everything I described. All right, Bentley's <laughs> just kind of there, like. I'm going to start, Bentley's like, looking around, uh, do we have a weapon, weapon anyone, looking around? Strapped to the side of your bag, you would have noticed a short sword. All right, cool. Bentley's going to grab the sword and be like, kind of like pull it out and like for a second be like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and then it's going to be like, uh, uh, I don't, ah, and like he goes, <laughs> goes running with it over his head and just like tries to like chop at it. Okay. At the bear. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say you're close enough. You make it to the bear, make an attack roll. All right. <laughs> 12, 14, 15, 17. That hits. All right. What is Roll. a short story again? D6. Yeah. D6. 1D6 plus strength. All right. Nice. Ooh, max damage. That's a 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Yeah. You... <laughs> Fucking tank. You said 9? Yeah, it's 9 damage. Okay. You come running up, <laughs> and the bear, like, right before you strike the bear, the bear just kind of turns and looks at you and goes, uh-huh. <laughs> and you just like smack it right behind the head, like on the neck, <laughs> and like blood begins just pouring down, and the bear goes, Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <And> like, <laughs> like screaming appropriately <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure at this point everyone would be freaking out. As, I was gonna say it's the. Bentley's not freaking out because of the blood. The look, on, the look on Kyle's face is beautiful right now. I really ruined my stealth approach. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to try to lead him away gently, but uh, I think we're past that. So Bentley's not freaking out because of the blood. Bentley's freaking out because there's a bear screaming at him. <laughs> the bear's just like, <laughs> We should have drawn a bear circle. That would have been good. All right. <laughs> All right, so now we're back up at the top with Amy Ann. And so Amy Ann, she's just, like, waving these squirrels and then just kind of stops and, like, wide eyes wa- watching this happen. <laughs> uh, you know, Jimmy, you know, jump jump on the back. This poor bear getting sliced in the neck. Uh, 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 it's just a bear, guys. We just need to – it's just an animal. We need to lead it away. We, we don't have to kill everything. We need, to, need she, an action. I know, I know, I know. She's going to uh, – She's going to try and, like, run up to the bear and punch it between the eyes to knock it out. Okay. Make me an unarmed strike. Thirteen. That will hit. So How um, much damage did you do? Eight. Okay. You clobber it uh-huh. right in the head one real good time, and it just slumps to the ground. <laughs> Is it dead? I don't know. Is it? I did. I didn't mean for it to hit it that hard. I just was trying to knock it out. Are we? Are we still in the ship order? Yes. Uh-huh. Tears, tears start You're... coming down Amy Ann's face. Like, did I? Ki- I didn't mean to kill it. Oh no! Right as you punch it, it goes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, we're killing Yogi. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I start. I start yelling. It's like it's knocked out, guys. Okay, don't kill it. Don't kill it. All right, it is now Taylor Jacobs' turn. <laughs> <laughs> as you see, as Amy Ann just ran up and, like, donkey punched <laughs> this bear. <laughs> I feel like Taylor, I, what is the, the, how bad does the bear look? Well, I mean, it's, it's like pouring blood from around its neck area. <laughs> and it's slumped, uh, what appear, I mean, what you could assume is unconscious on the Okay, ground. so it is unconscious? I mean, it, that's just your we assumption. think it is. Gotcha. Nobody's nobody checked its pulse. I don't know how that works on a bear. <laughs> we got it, guys. Great uh, teamwork, great synergy. Really proud of you completing this project on time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everyone, if you could just back away from the bear. Um, Amy Ann, you look like you need a little TLC. Maybe take five, circle back. Um, <laughs> you're just like sobbing. Yeah, just like tears Has down anyone face. seen Crystal? <laughs> So you, you kind of look around, and Crystal is, like, behind you, like, still at the tents, with holding what appears to be a primitive baseball bat. Oh, thank God. Okay, you stay there where I can see you. <laughs> 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 End of turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's now the bear's turn. <laughs> it's not dead. Uh, so, so as you're sitting there, you see the bear 
like move one of its paws. Not dead, not dead. <laughs> and and it, it looks like it's going to start to get up, and then it just slumps down again. Aww. And just goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. As it begins to whimper slightly, and then uh, that's its turn. Um, let's see. We're Jimmy, bare. it's now your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I have to do, and I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Wait, did you have a weapon? <laughs> <laughs> did you pull out the rad dagger? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> we no! gotta put the, we're going to put the bear out. No! All right, roll me an attack it's roll. It's like when you hit a deer with your car. You can't just leave it. <laughs> oh, roll an attack with advantage. I don't like oh, this. Right. <laughs> Thank God. Two. It's with advantage. You, you roll twice and take the higher number. <laughs> also two. <laughs> so you, in your, in your like sadness, you almost stab yourself. <laughs> like God. you closed your eyes and whiff on the bear completely. Uh, so that's your turn. Crystal. Crystal is like panicking. Like she's full panicking right this second. And she doesn't really know what's going on. And she's still writing that adrenaline from waking up and being the only person that knows and making all the noise. Um, so she's got this club and she is going. Yep. All right. I get it. Roll your attack with yeah, advantage. But also, she's actually going to cast uh, Shillelagh. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to make sure this thing is dead. <laughs> She doesn't know that she's going to be able to do this. This is a total accident, but she's going to cast it. See if we actually hit it, because we may not. I'm kind of hoping I don't. Ooh, fail, fail. Just wanted to be known, Bentley was going to finish I better say, you have advantage, by the way. <laughs> ah, well, it was an 18, so there's really no point in rolling anymore. I'm going to save you having to roll any more dice. Okay. Because I was going to give him death saving throws, and he failed his first one. <laughs> so you basically come in, and you just, like, cave in his skull. What is just, and I'm screaming. Like, I do not want to be doing this. This is not fun for me. I do not enjoy any of this. I'm screaming and panicking, and the only thing I can think to do is run at it and hit it really hard with a club. That's it. That is my rationale. So you, you basically cave in its skull. <laughs> She's crying and throwing up and all of the things. Like, she does not. And, and as she does it, you notice that her stick is glowing. <laughs> Taylor's just going to be like, wow, what great multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's really so, bad. <laughs> so as this is happening, uh, Eric walks back into camp holding some firewood <laughs> and drops it. And he goes, what happened? Where did you go? You left us here with a bear. I... The other two, they were staying up. I, I went to collect firewood. Wait, no, no, no. I fell asleep. Your eyes were open. <laughs> Notes for later. <laughs> Great feedback. <laughs> what the hell, you guys? He left you here specifically to keep watching? You fell asleep? No. I was say, Billy's like, what? No, 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 no. I, do, we, I asked him a question about the kingdom, and then at some point I fell asleep. I said I was going to collect firewood, and you said, well, I'll be up. And I don't remember that. So he uh, he just kind of looks. He goes, well, no sense in wasting good meat. Uh, Dibs on the pelt. A Amy Ann is still, like, standing in the same you spot she it. was where and watched uh, uh, Crystal just smash this bear's face in, and she's just Stopping. like. <gasps> he looks, and he sees, he sees the, like, sticks with the squirrel on them. He goes, Oh, did you use those as bait? That's genius. You could be a true huntsman. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I didn't want to kill and the bear. And you see as he, like, whips out some rope. All right, well, time to gut it. Anyone <gasps> care to join me? <laughs> I was like, Bentley raises his hand and is like, I used to go hunting with my dad. I'll help. Crystal All right, is excellent. just sobbing. She, that's a, she's a mess. There's right. no fixing Good this. Good question. Can I make clothes out of the bear pelt? Yeah. Are you wanting to make chaps out of, like, the bear's hide? <laughs> oh and goodness. a vest. <laughs> <laughs> you guys wake up, and he's got, like, the bear's head as, like, a hat. That's what I was going He went full do. on, what is it, Davy Bentley Crockett? Yeah. He went like, full on Davy Crockett. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if, there, if there's anything, any of the rest you want to do other than go to sleep? No, Richard cannot be here for this. And okay. that was too much adrenaline. Richard's like, which way to the town? No, <laughs> same. Taylor, same. Taylor, same. Taylor's Ready, like up her stuff. He's like, well, might as well use this energy now. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal just sat down and rocked back and she's just rocking back and forth. It's completely useless. <laughs> we need to go to a city. We need to get out of here. 
Need to get away from bears. <laughs> he says, Eric says, well, no sense in rushing off. He says, morning will be here in a couple of hours, and it'll be safe to traverse the woods then. It wasn't will safe it to stay here. <laughs> he says, looks like you were safe to me. There's strength in numbers. So you're saying it's trivial to traverse Trevaria? <laughs> Are you night. saying our experience Ooh. is trivial? <laughs> <laughs> that just gave me a headache. <laughs> it is terribly trivial to traverse Trevaria. True. Is this just wait until morning and then you can be on about your way? Is all right. So who's gonna stay up this time? <laughs> I'm uh, awake. I'm well. I, I'm useless. So. I want bear steak. Richard can we make is bear steak. Awake. Awake. Yeah. Billy looks at Eric. Yes. Sure. Amy Ann just laid on the ground, like to go to sleep. <laughs> she just lay, like on the ground, not a bed place or anything like that. All right. So, so I, I have a question. Yeah. As we're like, I'm assuming like later we're gonna like eat the steak. Is it like we're eating the steak? Is it like the image of uh, yes. it's whimpering the back ghost in of the bed? bear? The ghost of the bear will be haunting me. Yes. <laughs> so so you guys you guys do what you do for the night. Uh, you wake up in the morning and Jimmy has a new <laughs> pair of pants and a vest. Oh, wow. Yay. <laughs> And you, you got to give him the bear's head. And you That's have a hat. Yeah, you really, get the hat. Really Tyler, you oh, have no, a hat. Oh, no, I said he got it. Oh. oh, I gave it to you as a gift. Yeah, Sweet. Bentley gets Bentley gets a bear hat. Nice. <laughs> you know, only the bear necessities, right? He points you in the direction of the road to the main highway. Taylor's going to try, as we go along, like comfort Amy in and Thank have you. a talk about it. Yeah. And Crystal as well, just like, yeah, it's all right, everyone. Because now she's like four feet taller than everyone, too. <laughs> All right, so yeah. the rest of the road to the main highway is pretty easy. Uh, you guys notice that in the daytime that the the forest appears much less sinister, almost whimsical. All of you except for Crystal, who is slowly getting more and more, more and more of a headache as she goes along. Okay, so it's at this point she's going through her bag because she wants her sunglasses. Okay. So she's going to take her sunglasses out, and tr- do they help? You put them on, and it seems like your headache is starting to, like, subside a little bit. Okay. Your your weapon, the mace, also has a keychain, like, on the end of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> But it's way too big to be on a set of keys. does not make any sense yeah. whatsoever. It's, like, bright pink. Okay. Oh, and it has a pom-pom on it, too. Sure. Okay, yes. good. Yes. <laughs> Love it. That's useless, <clears throat> but it's on every single yeah. one of those yeah. for some reason. <laughs> um, so as you guys make your way down the, to the main road, like, you finally come into a clearing, and you see a very idyllic-looking countryside with a very well-maintained stone road ahead. As you approach where this road from the forest meets it, you see a strange-looking wagon coming down the road with a bunch of people standing inside of it, and it looks like several of them are, are drawing pictures of the countryside. And you see written down the side of the wagon the word Blugal, B-L-U-G-A-L. People, let's go talk to them. What's a Blugle? (laughs) <laughs> I think it says... So you would see the umlaut above the... Above the. Gratitude today keeps the haters away, and that's why we want to thank you for listening to Overworked and Underplayed. You just heard Alex Caps as our DM, Anna Lynn Hardy as Taylor Jacobs, Katie as Crystal, Marjorie as Dr. Amy and Amanda, Marcel Hardy as Richard Cox, Tyler as Bentley, and Kyle as Jimmy Sticks. If you enjoyed what you listened to, please leave a positive performance review on iTunes. It'll really help our merit-based raises. You can also help us out by following us on social at OwnUpPod. That's O-W-N-U-P-P-O-D. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll circle back in two weeks on November 17th for the next episode. Like bluegill or something. I don't know what that means. (laughs) That was perfect.